Hello YouTube. This video will tell you everything you need to know to get RetroPie installed in 30 minutes or less. So first we'll talk about the hardware that's required and then we'll move on to the installation. So for this video we're going to be using the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is the latest version of Raspberry Pi as of the state. And then you can also use older versions of the Raspberry Pi as those work on RetroPie as well. Then you can use a case to protect your Raspberry Pi an HDMI cable, or if you've got an older television like a CRT television, you can use a 3.5mm 4-pole composite cable. Then you want a power supply, 2.5 amps minimum, and then a USB stick to transfer your ROMs. You can also use an Ethernet cable to transfer ROMs over the network, or the built-in Wi-Fi, and we'll go over that later. And then it also has built-in Bluetooth. Then you want a microSD card, which is what RegPi will be installed on, a microSD card reader, to install RetroPie from your computer. And then you'll want a keyboard, uh, and then some sort of controller like a Logitech F310. Uh, I also have a USB SNES, uh, a bit do gamepad, which is Bluetooth, and then a wireless Xbox 360 controller, which requires a proprietary dongle. And so most of this hardware can be purchased with something like a can of kit on Amazon. But if you see any kits that have RetroPie pre-installed, you're being scammed because RetroPie is free. So just stick with reputable sellers and install it yourself because that way you know how to fix problems when they come up. So let's move on to the installation. Alright, so to install RetroPie you're going to want to go to retropie.org.uk and go to the download tab. And then this version uh, as of this date is version 4.4. And then if you'd like to donate to the RetroPie project you can do so here as well. So we have the Raspberry Pi 3, so we'll pick that version, but if you've got a Raspberry Pi 01, you'll pick this one. So Raspberry Pi 3, and then we'll 4.4 save file, and that will download. So while that's downloading, we need to get another piece of software to install the operating system onto the SD card. So that is called Etcher, and this is the best software to do that with, because it doesn't require extraction like Win32 Disk Imager does. So if you go to etcher.io, you can download that. And then once that's finished downloading, we'll, uh, we'll flash the image to our SD card. Right, it finished downloading, and then I've got my micro SD card plugged into my computer with the micro SD card reader. And then uh, got Etcher opened up, and then it looks like I've got my correct SD card selected and then we'll click flash and then yes and this might take some time all right so once it finishes it will possibly pop up with this that's saying you need to format it ignore that Windows 10 is dumb doesn't know what it's talking about so part of the reason is that it doesn't recognize the file system that was written to it because it's a Linux based file system and so that's why sometimes it will only show as like 58 megabytes but really all 16 gigs are there Windows just can't read it so ignore that just eject it and plug it into your Raspberry Pi and it should boot up just fine all right so on first boot it's going to resize the file system and then it will reboot and start with the controller configuration. So once it boots up to that, we'll go through the controller configuration. All right, so I booted up to emulation station. I'll hold down a button on a gamepad that's plugged in. D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. And I have a SNES controller, so these are all the buttons that are left. So I just hold down buttons to skip the rest of them. And the hotkey enable key is what we use to do saves and whatnot with RetroArch. So the default I usually use is select, but you can choose anything. Press OK. So this is a quick cheat sheet of the hotkeys. And so with the select that I chose, it selects start to exit, and then select right shoulder save, select left shoulder load, and then select right to input the save state. Uh, slot increase and then select left so that way you can have multiple saves or loads in a game and then select X to enter the retroarch menu 
and then select B to reset the game. So those are what you use if you're using a RetroArch game, which is most of the systems. And then uh, other ones have specific standalone controls if they're not part of the RetroArch uh, emulators. All right, now that the controller is configured, we can make a few configurations first before we transfer ROMs. You'll notice that there's no system set up yet, and they won't show up until you've actually transferred the games, and then Super Nintendo and whatnot will show up. So we'll open it up and go into the Wi-Fi settings so we can transfer ROMs over the network. And then we need to set a Wi-Fi country with the latest firmware. So go down to localization options, Raspberry config, then change Wi-Fi country, and in my case, I'm in the US for now. Finish, and then we'll connect to Wi-Fi network. Pick your SSID, put in your password. All right, so the IP at the top, that's what you're gonna to connect to if you're connecting over the network. And then we will move on to transferring ROMs. Alright, so the first method is transferring ROMs with the USB stick. So I've got my USB plugged into my PC, and then you'll want to create a folder called RetroPi, and then we'll safely eject that and plug it into the Pi. Right, so it should blink if you've got one of the light, and then wait for it to finish blinking. And then once it's done blinking, you know that it's been copied over. If you don't have a light on yours, just wait for a while. And then when you pull it out, you'll see that the file system has been copied. All right, stop blinking. So we'll pull it out. All right, so I plugged it back in and the RetroPie folder is now filled. So we go to the ROMs folder, and then I've got some NES ROMs, which you'll have to provide on your own due to copyright reasons. So NES, and I've got my NES folder. Put on a couple homebrew. So copy those over. We'll eject it and we'll plug it back into the Pi and it should copy it back over to the Pi. All right, so we plug the USB stick back in and then let it blink to copy it over. Shouldn't take long. All right, so it looks like it's copied over. And then we'll go to Emulation Station and restart it to see if they show up. All right, so we're back in Emulation Station. You can see that they haven't shown up yet, so we'll restart Emulation Station in order to refresh the game list. So quit, restart Emulation Station. Perfect, looks like they copied over. So there they are. They load great. And then select and start to exit. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, network transfer. If you don't want to use a USB, you can transfer over the network. All right, so we're back on the PC in Windows Explorer. So there are two ways to get to the ROMs on the network drive. So you want to type in uh, backslash backslash RetroPie and then sometimes that won't work but you can type in the IP address so if we remember from when I configured Wi-Fi it's this IP it might be different for you then you go into ROMs and then we've got our list of ROMs here so I've got my NES ROMs then we'll do the same thing copy them over All right, cool. So then you restart Emulation Station and they'll show up. So that's everything you need to know to get everything up and running. Obviously there's more, you can check the docs for those and other videos. Uh, but yeah, enjoy your gaming.